Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to automate a trading strategy that combines the Ishimoku cloud with the EMA trend filter in Python. Then we'll run a complete backtest on historical data to see how it performs. I backtested this strategy on the four hour time frame across multiple assets and the results were quite interesting. The yearly returns reached around 40% in some cases and the system stayed positive across most stop loss and risk reward parameter combinations, even when including commission fees. This is an example of how the signals look on the chart. Red triangles show short signals and green triangles show long signals. You'll see that we only take trades in the direction of the trend and the Ishimoku cloud helps us filter the perfect retracement entries. We'll go step by step through the rules, the coding and the backtesting. If coding is your jam and you are interested in seeing the uh, Python code, you can download the code for free from the link in the description. This way you can run the code, tweak the parameters and test the strategy on different assets. Now let's talk about the rules. First, First, we filter the trend using the EMA 100. You might want to experiment on this, maybe changing the moving average length. For a long trend, we need the current candle plus at least five previous candles, all trading fully above the EMA curve, meaning both the open and close of each of these candles are above the line of the moving average. Same logic for a downtrend. All candles must be below the EMA curve. Trading with the trend ensures we only trade with the prevailing market direction. Once the trend filter is confirmed, we move on to the Ishimoku setup. Imagine we are in a long trend confirmed by the EMA filter, so at least five previous candles are all above the EMA, which is the blue dashed line on this chart. Within the last 10 candles. At least seven must be fully above the Ishimoku cloud. Seven or six or five, it doesn't matter for now. This is just a parameter. So if I consider the green candle where we have the signal, for example, which is marked by the green triangle, within the previous 10 candles, at least seven were totally above the cloud. Well, in this case, all of the candles are above the cloud. On top of that, the current candle needs to open inside of the cloud and close above it, showing a bounce or retracement that's reversing back into the trend. And that's our entry signal for a long position. So in brief, we check if the candles are above the EMA. So that's our trend filter. We are in an uptrend. Then for each candle, we check within the previous 10 candles if at least six or seven are above the cloud. And we also test if the current candle is dipping inside of the cloud and bouncing back up, closing above it. Now, the reason these conditions are expected to work is because we are trading with a trend and we are trying to capture patterns where candles are also above the Ishimoku cloud, confirming a strong momentum. But then we look for a candle dipping or bouncing in and out of the cloud because we are looking for some kind of a retracement. And then when the candle closes above the cloud, we assume that the retracement is over and the price will probably continue in the direction of the main trend. For shorts, we just flip the rules. The challenge though is still to find a good trade management approach to complete this strategy. I will be using a simple approach testing different stop loss distances in relation to the ATR and different risk reward ratios and so different take profit distances. These are the return percentage results visually presented as a heat map. We can see that most of the returns are positive regardless of the stop loss and take profit distances. This alone confirms that this entry set of conditions is a valid trading indicator. Now, of course, if you were trading this manually, you wouldn't need to be that strict with the entry rules. For example, if just the wick of the candle dips into the cloud or close to the cloud and bounces out, you could take that as an entry too, especially if you spot strong support or resistance at that level. But for backtesting, we have to code hard rules in order to get some insights. Now let's move on to the coding part where I will show you step by step how this was implemented in Python and then we'll take a look at the full backtest results. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. By the way, you can download the whole Jupyter Notebook file from the link in the description of the video again. I'm importing NumPy, Pandas, Technical Analysis, Y Finance for the data and backtesting for backtesting uh, the strategy. These are the parameters we're going to be using. So these are the parameters for the Ishimoku. Then we have the ATR length. We have the ATR multiplier for the stop loss. So that's two. And then the uh, multiplier for the take profit. So that's four. Four divided by two, we have two. So that's our risk reward ratio. These will be overridden later on anyway. So it's not important at this stage. I'm going to execute these two cells anyway. Then we have one function, which is the fetch data. That's going to help us 
take the data from Y Finance. Then we have the uh, function Ishimoku manual because I decided to compute the Ishimoku manually for one reason, which is this one. So the Ishimoku by default shifts or reads a bit in the future. There's one curve where it tries to read from future data. This would be a look ahead bias for our backtesting. I didn't want any of this uh, data leakage uh, to mess up our backtesting. So that's why I'm not using the default Ishimoku from Pandas technical analysis package. Here is our version. Then we have the function add Ishimoku to a data frame. So it's also going to compute the ATR. At this point, we can do this. We can define the symbol, starting date and date the interval for our time frame, cache, commission, which is not needed by the way at this moment. The data frame is equal to fetch data, symbol, start, and, and interval. Then the data frame is add Ishimoku to the data frame, given these three constants or variables. Then we add the EMA column with the uh, technical analysis, pandas ta dot EMA, providing the closing prices and the length is equal 100. So this is where you can change it if you want. So now when we run this, we get this data frame. We have the prices, the candles, the Ishimoku components, the ATR and the EMA. Don't get confused with these two columns. It's nothing meaningful for now because I was experimenting with the Ishimoku for different signals. We're going to drop these. They are not needed for this strategy. Now this function, moving average signal, will just look into the number of back candles, five by default, it will test if the current candle and the five previous candles are all above the EMA or all below the EMA, and it will return the signal. That's what we will be calling the EMA signal. It will add it as a column to the data frame. So in other words, this is our trend filter. Then we have this function named create signals. It's going to consider the trend EMA signal computed previously, and it will add our entry conditions using the Ishimoku, testing if at least within the previous 10 candles, a minimum of five candles, for example, are above the um, cloud. And it will also test if the current candle opens within the cloud and closes either above or below it. So it will return a signal, a column named signal that will be added to the data frame. So when I run this cell, we will get one more column named signal next to the EMA signal. Okay, now we can plot these signals to visually inspect how things are working. I'm going to plot, for example, between zero and 450, and we can see those uh, green triangles that are showing or signaling good entry positions, as you can see, because the, uh, the blue curve is the EMA, as you can see. So we have the candles above, we have an uptrend, then whenever we have a retracement dipping within the cloud and then the candle closing above the cloud, let me zoom in a bit on this part. For example, we can see the details. So even this one. Okay, so we can see that we have a candle opening within the cloud, closing above it in an uptrend. And all the previous candles were above the cloud. So we have this bump shape and this is just a retracement going to bump up and the price is going to continue. So this is our entry position. Usually the um, good entry positions are this one. If you have a small candle, if you have a long candle, that's going to ruin it a bit for us because we're going to enter a bit higher than the cloud. So we need to wait a bit further for the price to be on the winning side. And it's going to ruin a bit our risk reward ratio. But anyway, when it's automated, it's more difficult. If you're trading manually, you can check this on the spot and make your own decision or your own conclusion as a trader. Here is an excellent signal because you can see three long wicks, three rejection of this cloud, and uh, then a small one, small candle, and then it's closing above the cloud. We are in an uptrend. You would enter here and probably trail stop until uh, you see a small retracement back down. And here is another example of short signals. As you can see, the early signals are better because once it happens, once you have this long candle, it's a bit too, um, too late to enter the market. And I think now that I'm making this video and discussing this with you, I think it would be uh, good to add one additional filter where if candles are way too long, we're going to discard the signal because we want to squeeze the best risk reward ratio. We want to have 
a very limited risk when we put the stop loss. We don't want a very wide stop loss. It might be an idea, a good idea for the next video, or you can investigate it if you download the code and work on it from your side. So anyway, this is our strategy. I defined all the conditions here. If the signal is one, the signal is minus one. So that's long entry, short entry, the stop loss and take profit. And uh, stop loss and take profit are ATR related. You have the uh, ATR multiplier. So the stop loss is equal to 1.5 times the ATR. That's the stop loss distance. And then take profit is twice the stop loss distance. This is how we compute. And we're going to uh, check the heat map, the returns percentage, based on different values of these two parameters. So that's what we are doing. We're changing the ATR multiplier and the risk reward ratio multiplier. So this function run backtest is going to run the backtest. It's going to fetch the data at the Ishimoku, compute the ATR, the EMA, length 100, compute the moving average signal, back candle seven. So I want seven candles to be above or below the EMA to um, uh, filter the trend. Then we create the signals again among the uh, last 10 candles. I want at least seven to be above or below the cloud. We drop the NA and um, we simply create the backtest with cash, commission, uh, close. These are the parameters that we're going to uh, inject as input parameters, input arguments for the, uh, the function run backtest. And the margin is 1 to 10, so we're taking a leverage of 1 to 10. And that's it. We basically return the statistics, the uh, data frame for, uh, for debugging and the BT, the backtest itself. So now the symbol I'm testing on is this one, the uh, US dollar CHF one year of data for hours uh, time frame then 100,000 or 1 million of cash a small commission to account for the fees and we can simply run the back test so I'm going to execute the previous cells everything is working smoothly and we can see the back test here we have 28 percent returns per year a sharp ratio of one uh, including commissions again because we are using the four hours time frame commissions and uh, fees are not as scary as minutes time frame then we have a maximum drawdown of minus 16 percent that's okay compared to uh, the returns and then average drawdown minus 3.7 percent now there is only uh, the win rate is actually excellent 53 percent for a high relatively higher than one risk reward ratio so it's two Usually anything above 33% when you take this risk reward multiplier, it's going to be um, a winner. So we have 53, it's good. Only one issue is that we have only 13 trades in here. And that's the uh, main weak point of this strategy. It's very selective. It's very robotic that you will have to wait a lot to get those uh, exact conditions. This is why when you are trading manually, you can be a bit more forgiving to increase your number of trades whenever you see this pattern. Ideally, we would deploy this strategy uh, online, live, but it will not trade on its own. It will actually send you uh, signals. It will send you some emails or some notifications whenever the pattern is there. And then you can jump in. Again, it's the four hours time frame, so there is no emergency. You have an hour to enter the market safely. But this way, I think you can squeeze more profit out of this strategy instead of waiting in front of the screen all the time. Now, I also tried to test it on different uh, Forex majors. I don't think Forex is the best place to test this strategy because the way it's working um, as a slow uptrend or slow downtrend, it works better on stocks, especially winning stocks. So it will allow you to buy on the dips and uh, get out of the market instead of just buying and holding for six months and uh, maybe putting yourself exposed to more risk when you have this long-term trading or long-term investment. So we can see here the results for different assets. It's not always positive, but this also might be because of choppiness of the market. Sometimes it causes uh, false signals. I'm sure there's a way to filter these out and to make things a bit better. But on average, it's still positive. Remember that we've used a very simple trade management approach using an ATR multiplier and the risk reward ratio of two, and that's it. So it might not be the best set of parameters for all the assets altogether. Each asset can be optimized on its own, or the strategy can be optimized for each asset on its own. Now, to optimize the strategy, you can uh, apply a grid approach. 
Uh, this is what I've done here for the uh, ATR values or the ATR multiplier between 1 and 2.5 with a step of 0 0.1, between 1 and 3 with a step of 0 0.1. And I'm going to run it. Again, we have same conditions, uh, leverage of 1 to 10, commissions, uh, cash, uh, 100,000 in this case. These are the results. We get the best returns of 43% in this case. A buy and hold is minus 5.7% and the annual return is 42 percent uh, the win rate is 69 percent number of trades is only 13 maximum drawdown minus 21 because we took leverage if we remove leverage of course we will be decreasing as well the returns but also the sharp ratio will increase because the risk will be decreasing so now we have a sharp ratio of 1.38 remember that we added a small commission fee as well so that's a, that's a sharp ratio with the commissions uh, included so we have a buy and hold minus five altogether win rate of 58 percent in this case and the maximum drawdown is just minus two percent so if you compare this to the returns that are around four percent that's almost half it's kind of safish this is why I decided to add the uh, small leverage. Another function to plot the heat map, it's going to take all the values computed by the optimization, the ATR multiplier between 1 and 2.4, and the risk reward multiplier between 1 and 2.9. And it will plot here the returns. And notice those ridges, those clusters of returns. Well, first of all, only in black are the negatives. So most of these, not even negatives, I think below one. So the 0 0.6, 0 0.66 are not taken into account. Now I'm going to increase. I made something very interesting here. Uh, the minimum return is 10, let's say. I'm going to highlight between minimum returns of 10. So I'm turning off anything below 10% returns. And notice how we start having those clusters of parameters. And it's showing this decreasing slope. And this is totally normal because when we increase the ATR multiplier or the stop loss distance in this case, we need to have a very low risk reward ratio. Otherwise, if we increase both at the same time, the uh, take profit will be very far from the entry position. And this is why the best set of parameters is decreasing like this. Either you have a high stop loss distance and a low risk reward ratio, or you have a low ATR multiplier or stop loss distance and a high risk reward ratio, which actually is working the best for this strategy to have something, a very close stop loss from the entry position and a very far take profit. So around 2.5 or 2.9 risk reward ratio with a very close stop loss. It actually makes sense because we are trading along the trend with the trend. We're squeezing our entry position to the retracement, to the minimum of the retracement, when we are dipping within inside of the cloud and just getting out of it. So this is why you don't need a very wide stop loss distance, but you would need actually a very far take profit to maximize your profits in this case from the price rebound in the direction of the main trend. And this will be it for this video. Download the code, take the strategy for a spin, try it out. Let me know what you find out. If you have any other ideas, of course, please leave them in the comments section. And don't forget to support the channel by liking, subscribing, sharing your brilliant ideas. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.